I did a thing. Hey guys, so today I'll be doing a buddy fight deck profile for my Danger World deck that I came third in in the Paris Spring Fest. So I'll be explaining some of my choices. I already answered some questions on Facebook because I posted the deck list on the NA group. And if you want, uh, like how I how I did over the rounds and stuff, if you want coverage, you can watch my coverage video. I talked about everything, all my matchups and stuff like that, and how I did in the tournament. So I'll first go over the main deck and then the side deck. So obviously I play Danger World, and my buddy is Armonite Little Drake. Simply because he's the only 4 of in the whole deck, and also his skill is quite nice. And I generally like having size zeros as my buddies, so yeah. Now I'm going to start off with the size 3s, then move on to items, and then to spells. So for size 3s, I play 3 Armonite Iblis. So his skill is, pay, his cost is pay 1 gauge and put the top card of your deck into his soul. He's a 7 to 5, and if your weapon has 3 or more cards in the soul, he gets penetrate. And if your weapon has 5 or more soul, then he gets a critical plus 1. He also has double attack and soul guard. He's a really, really good size 3. He's way better than Demon because he walls and he stalls and he tanks for so long because his ability, his call cost is not the only way to get his gauge. You can also get it with Lil Drake or with the impact that I'll show later. But he's so good to stall until you set up your cradles and he's generally a really good card. And I'm actually thinking of bumping him up to 4, but I tried to, uh, I kept my deck list the same as I used in the tournament just for the sake of this video. So that's my size 3s. Now for size 2s. I play 3 Armor Knight Archangel. Uh, at first I thought this might backfire. I'll just show off his skill. So his call cost is that you can put as many Armor Knights as you like from your field into this card's soul. So this includes Armor Knight set spells as well. And he cannot be called to the center. And he normally normally has 2-2-4 two, two, stats, but he gets plus 3 attack for each card in the soul. It doesn't have to be just an Armor Knight, it can be any card in the soul. And he has double attack and soul guard. So he's really nice for field clearing, but his ability to not be called in the center kind of does. It is sort of a hindrance, but somehow it didn't really, I don't know, bite my ass during the tournament that much. It actually helped me a lot. I use him mostly for field clearing because I usually don't have that much soul. I often just call him with like nothing in the soul so I can just go field clear or I can just poke for four sometimes. So he's a really nice card. I was, I was really skeptical about him first, but I'm quite glad that I play him. And then the final size 2 that I play is the 2 Armonite Cerberus, the original Cerberus. So, if you want to see his skill. His call cost, he doesn't have any call cost, you can call him for free. He's a 5 to 5, size 2. And basically, you can put a size 1 or less Armonite from your field into his soul. And then you can take a card out of his soul and destroy a monster on the opponent's field. And he also has soul card. So it's nice against some matchups like... Uh, like Ancient and stuff like that. There's some really matchups that Day is really good against, so that's basically why he's in the main deck. And there's one matchup that I really am afraid of, and that's why this card is in here. Armani Osmodai. His call cost is pay one gauge and um, put an Armani from your field into the drop zone. And then when he enters the field, you destroy the left and the right of the opponent's field. This is really good against the Raging Spirits matchup, which is my hardest matchup of all for this deck. Like, I really find it that I just kind of die to older nulls and stuff like that, so... I, I think he's really good in the main deck against Raging Spirits, but I'm thinking of maybe taking, putting him in the, in the side of it instead. But he's really nice, and I honestly really like him. So, Armonite Smoda is a good card. I've, I've always used him in the deck, so... It's a bit, it's a, it's a bit hard to take him out, because he is a nice card. Moving on to the rest of the size ones, I play 3 Armonite Eagle Ace. You can see his skill, if you have 5 life or less, put this card from the field into the soul of your weapon. And if this uh, card is in the soul of your weapon, that weapon cannot be destroyed or put back to hand. So he has a 3-2-2, two, two, so his stats aren't too incredible. But the skill to not allow your weapon to be destroyed is so good against matchups. Like any anything that can destroy weapons, it's just such a good card. So I'm really glad that um, that we got this card. He's I wouldn't put him 4 because that's too much and he's clocking up too much space. I wouldn't put him at 2 either because that's not enough. 3 I think is a perfect number because usually you mill into him. Except for that one game I had where I really needed him and I just couldn't mill into him. So I think 3 is perfectly fine. I think that's the best number for, for um, Eagle Ace. Moving on to the rest of the size ones. I played 2 Armor Knight Ogre Ace. So he costs 1 gauge to call. And he's a 5-3-1, which are nice stats for size 1. And basically if you have 5 life or less, you put him in the soul of your weapon. And if he's in the soul of your weapon, uh, your weapon gets plus 5k attack. So this is really good against the Ancient World matchup, as I said before. And generally really good against any walling decks, because there's a lot of big size 3s going around. 
like um, drag against Dragon World is also good. Against a lot of things, it's really nice to have it in there. I only have two because you don't really need them against all decks. Like there's some decks that are really low on defense, so like I just don't even use them on against those decks. Like I might even side them out against some stuff like um, 72 pillars and stuff like that. So because he's really not that necessary in some cases, but when when he is necessary, I really need him. And to top it off for size ones, I play three Gar uh, Armor Knight Gargoyle Ace. So he doesn't have a call cost, and if you have five life less, you can put him and solve your weapon. And then his skill basically is when he's in the soul, you can counter to remove him from the soul and nullify an attack. He's really good. He's 2 1 4 as well. The 4 defense is quite nice. But basically, he's a null, and you don't have to have a center open, and that's really nice because you can protect your monsters with him as well. Because all the other nulls for danger say yeah, you cannot have a monster in the center, because either you have to be attacked, or you cannot have a monster in the center. So he's another null that really helps the deck. So he, I really like him, but I would not put him at four because I already play uh, eight other nulls, so it's okay. And finally, for the size zeros, for Arm Knight Little Drake. His skill is when he enters the field, you can discard a card from your hand and then put it, put another card from your drop zone into the soul of a card on the field. So you can put it into the into Iblis, into your weapon, into Cerberus, into the Archangel, anything. His stats, of course, aren't that great because his skill is so great. And generally it's nice because I often sit on Iblis, so it's nice to have Lil Drake out there to kind of poke for damage or take out. Since he does have two attack, he can take out some really low defense monsters, so that is nice. And I feel that his skill is really nice, so I would keep him at four just because of that. Moving on to the weapons, we have the MVP of the deck, Infinite Armament Dangerous Cradle. So this card is 5-1, and basically I'll start off with a second skill. This card gets critical equal to the sum of the critical of weapons in his card's soul. So when he's equipped, if you have, let's say, a weapon with 3 crit in the soul, then he will have 4 crit, and then basically you'll be a 5-4 that swings for 4 damage. And then if you get another weapon, then it's going to be 7 crit, and now that's how it works. But his other skill, his first skill is you pay one gauge and you choose a weapon from your hand or drop zone and you put it into this card's soul and it can only be used once per turn. So every turn you can pump a weapon into the card's soul. And if it has three or more cards in the soul, not just weapons, just any cards, then it gets penetrate. So this is really good because you can turn it into like a 10-7 penetrate or 10-10 penetrate or 5-7 penetrate. It's so nice. Like the card is so good. Like I've ended games where people just like sit on big life and I just poke with this. Like I hit with it once and they die. So it's really good, I really love it. And it's one of the things that really, like this is the support that Danger needed and I'm really happy we got it. But because it requires all this soul for the weapons and stuff, we have to play a lot of weapons. So to back up, I play four Demonic Spear Swirling Darkness. It's cast, it's, it's uh, equip cost is one gauge. And it's a 3-3, three, three, so it's not that great. But he has the three critical, which is nice because even when I don't get Cradle, I can sit on this and just poke them for 3 damage, or even the 3 attack isn't that bad usually. So I do like this, and I do prefer it over my other weapon that I play, only 2 times, which is Explosive X, Ricto Demon Slay. It also has an equip cost of 1 gauge, but it's a 6-3, but you cannot call monsters to the center. Why I do not equip this is because I like having Iblis sit in the center. So basically, this would turn down my Iblis plays, so I just I prefer sitting on this and having this to go in the soul. I like to play this weapon lineup because they're all 3 crit, so I get more uh, damage on my cradle. So, now now we're done with the weapons, I'll move on to the spells. Actually, no, the impacts first. This is the key impact that the Danger always needed. This is Demon Arms Door Armored Gate. Its cast cost is that you have to mill the top 5 cards of your deck into your drop zone, and then you can only cast this if you have an item equipped. That's the only kind of uh, requirement. And basically, when you've milled 5, you can put a card from your drop zone into the soul of a card in the field. This is so good because it turns your drop zone into a toolbox. So basically, your drop zone is a toolbox, you toolbox for free, just by having an, uh, an item equipped. And you can put in the soul of an Iblis, Archangel, a, um, Cerberus, or your weapon, anything. It's so, so nice. I like it at 4. 3 is also fine, but definitely not 2. 3 or 4 is what you should be playing this impact at. It's such a good impact. I usually don't like impact, but this is an amazing, amazing impact. Moving on to the spells now, we have Invigorating Breath. I play it 2 times instead of 3, simply because of space, but also the third time. You don't get that much life off of it, so it's not that important, I think. You can only cast it when you have a weapon equipped, but otherwise it's a free cast, and you gain 4 life. But then if you already have one in the drop zone, you gain one less. So on the first cast you gain four, and the second cast you gain three. On the third cast you gain two, which is why I don't play a third one. It's nice, it keeps you up. I've actually, like some people ask me why do I play this? Basically because it keeps me alive. Like there have been games where this was the saver, like I just stalled on Iblis, 
like I said, I got, got my weapon full, and then and you also have, a, have to have a monster on the center. So let's see when my Iblis dies. I'll cast this, then I'll put out another Iblis, then wait till Iblis dies again, cast this, and then I have a huge weapon already, so then I just go in for game. So it's a really nice, really nice spell. I like it. It's big life gain, so I don't really mind. I play two times Survival Chance. It's a its requirement is that you have five life or less, and you have to pay one gauge. And basically, when you have five life or less, you pay one gauge and you draw two. So it's a good draw spell, but it has given me a lot of dead draws because it plays so many weapons. Sometimes I don't want to see those weapons anymore because my cradle is already full of crits. So I'm this you can actually go without this. Survival chance is nice, but sometimes it will give you dead draws. So, and thing is, when you play 10 weapons, that's a fifth of your deck that are going to be dead draws. So, it's not as good as it could be in other decks, but it's still, it's still a nice card. Now for the nullifiers, I play 4 of Shredding Battle Wall. This nullifier says that you have to have an item equipped, and this is only when you are being attacked. But when you are being attacked, you can cast this, and then you nullify the attack and you gain one life. This, the one life gain is really clutch because it saved me in so many games and I personally think this is the better uh, uh, counter spell, I mean the better Malphi spell because of that one life gain and yeah. And thing that people go like, oh but, but you won't have a weapon equipped all the time. When you play 10 weapons, it's a very high chance that you're gonna run into weapons. Like in early game, I mean, you're not gonna like the amount of times I didn't get weapons are were very rare. I think out of all the games in during uh, Springfest, I, there might have been like one or two. But other than weapon destruction, that's like the only thing that gets rid of them. But yeah, this is a really nice um, nullifier, and I do prefer it over this one, which I only play three times, which is a battle or a circle. So this one's requirement is that you have an item. You have you have to have your center open, but you don't have to have an item equipped and it just nullifies the attack. It's nice, but the amount of times I have my center closed is unreal. Like, I, I really have Iblis in there a lot. Thing is, the other nullifier also doesn't work with Iblis in the center, but then like, I don't know, at least I get the one life gain. From this one you don't get the life gain, so it's not that great. This one is mostly to protect your monsters, like your Archangels and stuff, because uh, you don't have to be attacked. It, it doesn't have to be attacking you, unlike the other one. This one can, when you're, anything is attacked, then you can catch this, so. I quite like it. I think it's both both nullifiers are important, but I play four of the other one instead of four of this one. And the final spell is Armor Reuse, super good card. You can search your drop zone for an armor knight and put it into your hand. And this is just so important, like I really love it. It can search like your Iblis dies, you cast this, you get your Iblis back. Like you can get your little drakes to put in more soul. It just it makes your drop zone into a toolbox, and that's what I like about this deck. This and the impact turn your drop zone into a toolbox. So that's it for the main deck, now I'll go into the side deck. I play one Tenbu, this card is an MVP for my for my sideboard. Uh, his skill is, well he's an Omni Lord, so you can play one of in each deck, except uh, for uh, Dragon World, which you can play four of if you want. His cast cost, his cold cost is two gauge, and when he enters the field you just blow up all the monsters on the field. So he's really nice, he's also 636, the 6 defense is nice because a lot of monsters tend to have just five. I, he came in handy so many games, like so many games when I sided him in, I just blow up field and then go in for game. Like against um, 72 pillars, he had a full field, I go Tenbu and then I basically ended it. So I, I really like him in the side, I think Tenbu is a great card. Next up I play one Armonite Demon because there are some decks that cannot handle the rush that Demon provides. But I did not side him at all, I just kind of put him in for the opportunity in case I need him. But Iblis is just so good that I usually don't tend to need him, so I like Demon, but I didn't need him during Springfest. Now I play two Fang Dragon Declaration. This card says that when you are attacking and your opponent casts a Nullifier, then you can pay to engage and pay one life to nullify the spell cast by an opponent. So it doesn't have to be a Nullifier, just any spell that they cast when you're attacking. So this is nice because sometimes you'll go in with that 7 crit uh, cradle and you, and you really want to end it there, so you just go, okay, bye. But it really combos well with another card in my, card in my side, which is Lord R Meditation, which says counter, you put two cards from your top of the deck into your gauge. So basically when you anticipate that you want to go in for a game with cradle or something, you just cast this to get the two gauge, and then when they null it or something, you just go, okay, no, no nulls for you, just die. So I quite like it. I didn't use it in Springfest, but I, I don't know, I'm gonna test around a little bit, see and see, because so many of my spells and everything, it just like the space is really limited, so I didn't really want to, um, I didn't really want to clog it up even more. So that's for these side cards, so now we have four more. 
I play two double guillotine. Uh, this card's good against quite a few decks. It's one gauge, and, when, and you can only cast it when you're being attacked by opponent's weapon. And basically destroy that weapon, and then you play a rock, paper, scissors, and if you win, you deal critical equal to the to your weapon's critical. So if you have a 7 crit cradle, and then you win rock, paper, scissors, then, well, they're gonna die, basically. This is nice against some decks, like the mirror match, if they don't have eagles. And there's just quite a few decks. Hero World is not that great against, of course, but it's generally a nice card. I keep it in the side just for those matchups. And I mean, that's what the sideboard is all about. And finally, I play two Battle Dragon Slaying Crush. This card's cast cost is pay one gauge and pay two life, and then you can destroy a card on the field. Destroy any card on the field. That's a really good thing. It's good against stars. You can destroy their uh, frozen stars. It's good against katana. You can just destroy their impacts. Like you can destroy so many things, and it's such a cheap cost. Really, it's one gauge and two life, and the life you can gain back anyway. So this is the one that I cited in a lot. Like the two I cited in the most were these cards: Tenbu and. Uh, but no, the rest I didn't actually side in, I think, during Spring Fest. I didn't really, I just didn't need them. I didn't have matchups where I needed them that much. Like, there were some games that didn't side at all, but Tenbu is a really MVP for the sideboard. So, that is my Danger deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, basically, I, I really like Danger. Like, I've always played, played it, except like for regionals, except for Germany last year where I played Darkness Dragon World. But yeah, Danger is my, my, my boys. So I'm really happy with how I did. I will be. I, there are some people asking me like, oh, why didn't you put in like um, Battle Spirit Unite? And that's actually because I don't have them yet. But I, I am testing them, and I'm quite liking it. So there's a chance. Like I'm definitely gonna make some changes to this deck because I saw the weaknesses of it against some matchups that I like. My biggest, my hardest matchup is definitely Ancient World. Like Raging Spirits just destroy me, and it's really annoying. So I'm kind of testing around, see what improvements I can make, and then, well, hopefully I can top again in the next regionals and give you another improved deck list. But that, this is the deck that I topped with in Springfest for the Buddy Challenge, and I hope it helps you guys, whoever wants to build danger. And yeah, that's pretty much it for now. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.